Have you ever stared into a body of water and wondered, what's going on down there? Usually, it's way more than you could fully comprehend. We're talking treasures buried for centuries, mysteries finally solved, and discoveries that astounded the world. From full-on locomotives swallowed by a lake and ancient Roman cities beneath the sea, to rocket engines from outer space and artifacts you'd need scuba gear to explore. But wait, there's more. 20 most terrifying things recently discovered underwater. Artificial Reef An artificial reef is a human-created underwater structure, typically built to promote marine life in areas with a generally featureless bottom. To control erosion, block ship passage, block the use of trawling nets, or improve surfing. Many reefs are built using objects that were built for other purposes, such as sinking oil rigs, scuttling ships, or by deploying rubble or construction debris. Other artificial reefs are purpose-built, like these little domes. A Florida-based company offers an oceanic burial option that lets you add your cremated remains to a perforated dome called a reef ball, which will sit at the bottom of the ocean and become a home for local sea life. The reef balls also had to be something that could survive the violent influence of underwater storm currents. So, the hollow reef balls weigh anywhere between 800 and 4,000 pounds and have a domed shape and large perforations all across the surface. Those perforations ensure that storm pressure can't build up against them and shove them out of place. Since its creation, the company started getting more and more requests from people who wanted their remains to be turned into reef balls, and thus the eternal reef concept was born. Deep sea camera captures what no one was supposed to see. And frankly, we would never want to see something like this if we were on a deep sea scuba dive. Scuba diving is one of the most popular recreational sports in the world, enjoyed by people of all ages from all walks of life. Fantastic coral reefs, eerie shipwrecks, and incredible marine life are major attractions for people. But it's important to remember that the dangers of scuba diving exist, as some are potentially life-threatening. And coming across multiple mystery sea creatures like this, the likes of which we have never seen, is terrifying. Look at those large, bulging eyes. And what about those Stonehenge-sized teeth? It looks like it's almost delighted to see such easy prey as a pint-sized human scuba diver to chow down on. Then again, these huge deep-sea monsters might be as freaked out by scuba divers and their bright lights as they are of it. Is it too late at this point? Help us figure out in the comments section and use the hashtag open discussion. Deep Sea Feast Imagine an all-you-can-eat buffet bonanza, nearly a mile underwater, in bone-chilling cold and as dark as a dungeon. That's what startled scientists recently discovered off the coast in California. In the deep sea, this dead whale is providing an unexpected feast for creepy crawly ocean organisms. From tiny red worms to a ghostly fleet of octopuses. For them and us, it's fascinating. An absolute oasis of food. A dead whale doesn't rest in peace. As soon as its huge body sinks to the ocean floor, it becomes an instant meal in a hostile environment. That's a virtual food desert devoid of any nourishment. For the hungry creatures that live there, it's a sudden and unexpected bounty. Normally, deep sea creatures survive on the tiny marine snow that drifts from higher waters, such as dead plankton, shell fragments, and yup, poop. A dead whale can deliver the energy equivalent of a hundred years worth of food in one fell swoop. But a carcass like this, called a whale fall, creates a rich and impromptu ecosystem unto itself. There are likely hundreds of thousands of these carcasses called whale falls. But their degradation, biology's vanishing act, is almost never witnessed. It's an all-you-can-eat deep sea feast. Human skeleton. Whether it's in Lake Mead or on the border of California and Arizona, or at the bottom of the Colorado River, imagine being the law officer who gets the phone call saying, we found some human remains below the surface. The reporting person stated that they were out snorkeling when they noticed skeletal remains at the bottom of the river. Authorities sent divers down to investigate. The diver took an underwater camera and video recorded the footage as they saw it. The divers found a mysterious pair of skeletons having a tea party at the bottom of the riverbed and alerted the authorities. What was even stranger was that the skeletons were resting on seats and surrounded only by rocks. There were no shipwreck dive sites around that could give clues as to what the diver had stumbled across. 
News of the mysterious discovery spread around the world as many tried to work out how the skeletons got there. Seeing the news, a husband and wife confessed that the skeletons in the Colorado River near the Arizona and California border were placed there as a private joke, and admitted that the skeletons are fakes. It's quite a sight to see when you're just doing some casual snorkeling. Osborne Reef Originally constructed of concrete jacks, this artificial reef off the coast of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, was the subject of an ambitious expansion project utilizing old and discarded tires called Osborne Reef. The expansion ultimately failed, and the reef has come to be considered an environmental disaster, ultimately doing more harm than good in the coastal Florida waters. The reason for the creation of artificial reefs in this area is due to the fact that this region has a narrow low reef system, which provides a very limited habitat for marine life. So to increase the fish population and to provide havens for marine life and coral growth, a large number of structures were sunk or built in the region resulting in over 112 dive sites, around 40 freighters, tugboats and barges between 60 to 200 feet of water. But it's the tires that caused the most problems. Over time, salt water corroded the restraints that held the tires together. And ocean currents, waves, and storms turned loose tires into projectiles that moved with such force that they could cause irreparable damage to coral reefs and other marine ecosystems. In 2007, cleanup efforts began, but still, several hundred thousand of the estimated two million tires intended to make up the Osborne Reef still rest in the coastal Florida waters. Train Wreck Sometimes a shipwreck is not a ship, it's a train. Wreck hunters recently discovered a locomotive at the bottom of Lake Superior that sank over a century ago. As the story goes, locomotive number 694 was en route in 1910. The train was making excellent progress, proceeding at an approximate speed of 35 miles per hour. Out of the darkness, the front brakeman suddenly made out the outlines of a large boulder resting on the tracks that had rolled down the adjacent cliff. Given the train's speed, the train could not be stopped in time. The locomotive struck the boulder. It lurched over the embankment and down the 60-foot cliff into Lake Superior. In 2014, a small team of divers discovered a number of trains' boxcars, but the locomotive remained elusive. However, recently another team of hunters was able to locate the locomotive using the previous team's coordinates. The steamer was hiding over 230 feet below the surface amongst a field of boulders. Initially, the hope was that if the locomotive was found, it could be dredged up and placed on display. But the train was so damaged and destroyed that the salvagers seemed content to just leave it where it lays. Sunken Roman City Hidden at the bottom of the Gulf of Naples in Italy for 1700 years, the ancient Roman city of Baiae has been revealed to the world after divers were permitted to explore and photograph the site, known to historians as the ancient Roman version of Las Vegas. It was a getaway for the rich and famous where hedonism ran wild. The fashionable resort was popular with the likes of Julius Caesar, and it was once filled with luxury vacation villas and party houses. However, the very same volcanic activity that provided the city with natural hot springs for its spas and baths ultimately destroyed it. By the 1500s, the remains of the formerly luxurious town were abandoned. The water level slowly rose due to the same volcanic vents that were once a draw to the area, and most of the ancient ruins were drowned under the shallow waters of the bay. The city was once located right along the water's edge, but was eventually claimed by the gulf. It wasn't found again until 2014, when heavy flooding caused landslides that exposed portions of the city's old walls. Today, the submerged Roman city hidden in the waters calls divers to travel back in time and swim through ancient streets, mosaics, statues, columns, and remains of what was once a seaside Roman party city, Moon Rocket Engine. Recently, a very complex technical underwater expedition resulted in the recovery of an engine from the Apollo 11 mission, the first landing of man on the moon on July 20, 1969. The 30-day recovery operation took place near the Bermuda Triangle, on one of the most advanced deep-water salvage ships equipped with the latest dynamic positioning technology. They located and recovered remains and debris from two F-1 engines that powered Apollo's Saturn V rockets. All of this amazing technology enabled the recovery team to work at a depth of 14,000 feet of seawater, exploring several debris fields until they recovered the F-1 engine. When NASA's mighty Saturn V rockets were launched on missions to Earth's orbit and to the moon in the late 1960s and early 1970s, the five F-1 engines that powered each of the booster's first stages dropped into the ocean and sank to the seafloor. 
There they were expected to remain, discarded forever. The technology required to recover the Apollo artifacts from almost three miles beneath the sea parallels the technology used to place a man on the moon. One mission was realized in outer space, while the other was conquered in inner space. Plane. Now home to shrimp, tropical fish, and the odd barracuda, this World War II warplane covered in algae lies resting on the seafloor. The Douglas Dakota DC-3, which was used as a transporter by a Turkish paratroop regiment in World War II, today sits at the bottom of the Mediterranean, its twin propeller engines now rusted and covered in coral. Air power played a major role in combat for the first time during World War II, and both sides had some formidable aircraft in action. War is of course deadly by nature, but for the pilots and crew of these aircraft, that risk was simply a part of the job. Many were shot out of the sky. Some suffered mechanical failures, while others just got lost and simply ran out of fuel. But that's not the only plane divers are exploring. There are planes and oceans around the world that were deliberately sunk to create self-sustaining reefs for healthy ecosystems. Wreck diving is one of the most popular activities for scuba divers around the world, and there's little to compare with the sight of the often tragic majesty of a sunken vessel. Of all the vehicles lost at sea, however, airplanes that have come to a watery ending are especially eerie, as they were never supposed to be in there in the first place. Underwater River It sounds like it couldn't be possible, an underwater river? But the truth is that they do exist. The Black Sea Undersea River, for example, is a current of water flowing along the seabed of the Black Sea. The discovery of the river in 2010 was made by scientists and is the first of its kind in the world. The undersea river stems from salty water spilling through the Bosphorus Strait from the Mediterranean Sea into the Black Sea, where the water has a lower salt content. Submerged in deep water, one of the last things a diver may expect to find 90 feet below the surface is a river view. But that's exactly what awaits those bold enough to dive into Mexico's Cenote Angelita. The eerie landscape of swirling mist looks like a flowing river in the middle of the cave, complete with trees emerging from the surface. Very few people are aware that there are places under the sea where rivers and lakes exist. Water bodies of different shapes and sizes can be found in the depths of the ocean. The different density levels in the two waters cause them to layer. The result is a breathtaking convergence of two habitats. The phenomenon can mostly be seen in person by extremely skilled scuba divers. But there are places in the world the underwater rivers can be seen in shallow waters. Yonaguni Monument When you discover this place, you'll be asking, man-made pyramid or natural formation sculpted by the sea? Geological wonder or proof of the existence of the lost continent of Mu, the Atlantis of the Pacific? The number of theories about the Yonaguni Monument is endless. According to experts, the Yonaguni Monument is a monolithic structure made of layers of sandstone and mudstone. Researchers found stone tools and artifacts that would have been used for farming, according to specialists. There are also tablets where they would have found engraved symbols and figures of animals. But the nearly vertical walls from 80 feet to almost the surface of the sea are the most baffling. The report says a natural explanation would require that the same force would have been equally applied all along. But the distribution of natural forces dramatically varies from the depths to the surface. They checked at the bottom for rocks that would have fallen from natural erosion, but they found nothing. They also found evidence of a drainage system, a loop road, a retaining wall, a drinking water pool, holes for pillars, a carved face. These ancient ruins cover an area spanning almost 1,000 feet by about 500 feet. Bimini Road For hundreds of years, the story of the sunken city of Atlantis has graced the pages of novels and captured the attention of historians and fantasizers alike. One of the most compelling pieces of archaeology put forth by Atlantean believers is the Bimini Road, sometimes referred to as the Bimini Wall. The Bimini Road is an underwater rock formation located just off the coast of the Bahamian island of North Bimini. The road rests on the seafloor about 18 feet below the surface. Set on a northeast-southwest line, the road runs straight for about half a mile before ending in a curving, graceful hook. Alongside the Bimini Road are two other smaller linear rock formations that appear similar in design. According to legend, the city of Atlantis sank into the ocean in one single day, wiping its existence off the Earth 11,000 years ago. Since that time, scientists, treasure hunters, and explorers have searched endlessly to find even a trace of the lost world, said to be partially intact somewhere below the ocean waves. 
1968, a diver discovered this series of stones. They appeared man-made and were evenly spaced out in a road-like line stretching a half mile. Unfortunately, carbon dating and analysis of the blocks led to the conclusion that the roads were made naturally through geological forces. Puffer fish making crop circles. No, this has nothing to do with aliens, but it looks that way. They look like underwater crop circles. Divers recently noticed these beautiful, strange circular patterns on the seafloor off Japan. And soon after, more circles were discovered nearby. Oddly, the geometric formations mysteriously came and went, and nobody knew what made them. But eventually, the mystery was solved. The creator of these remarkable formations was a newly discovered species of pufferfish. These crop circles are something that pufferfish use for mating. That's right. The more ridges built into the structure, the higher the chance the fish will mate. Female fish are reportedly so attracted to the multi-layered ridges sculptured in the sand that they will seek out the male fish upon discovering his so-called nest. When the circles are finished, females come to inspect them. If they like what they see, bow chicka bow wow. After mating, the couple will then deposit the newly fertilized eggs in the sand at the center of the circle. Besides being beautiful, the underwater crop circle also serves a highly practical purpose. The carefully carved ridges act as buffers against ocean currents, protecting fertilized eggs from being either moved or swept away. Maori Wreck Widely voted as one of the best places for scuba diving in the deep blue waters of the Mediterranean Sea, Malta offers many exciting diving spots of great biodiversity and historical interest. One of these places is the HMS Maori Wreck, a British tribal class destroyer that was attacked by the Germans during World War II and sunk in this harbor. The wreck is not far from the shore and it's easy to approach. Due to the shallow water in which the wreck lies, the wreck is quite broken down by storms, and much of her has also been salvaged. Some of the forward superstructure is still easily recognized as parts of an old warship, while much of it is found strewn alongside the wreck on the seabed. Getting inside is possible, but the wreck has been in the sea for several decades, so the structure is getting weak and could collapse. The sides of the ship are well rusted through and have large holes in the front, and the rear is open since the wreck broke into two. The forward superstructure and the bow section, as well as the two front gun bases lie in the white sand, at a maximum depth of 82 feet, suitable for all skill level divers, with good visibility and no sea currents. The HMS Maori wreck is perfect for underwater photography and marine life observation. HTMS Sadakut Underwater adventures like diving the HTMS Sadakut shipwreck in Thailand are usually reserved solely for treasure hunting movies and TV documentaries. Not today, we're going in. Just off the coast of the mainland lies the island of Turtle Island. Travelers looking to take their first breath underwater and veteran divers alike flock to this tiny island in the Gulf of Thailand. Mainly for this shipwreck, the HTMS Sadakut was a World War II era Navy troop carrier. It was used in many conflicts during the war, but most famously the fierce battle of Iwo Jima. The cost to navigate the ship back to US waters after the war was too high, so the HTMS Sadakut was gifted to the Royal Thai Navy in 1947. It remained in service until 2007. In 2011, it was relocated off Turtle Island and successfully sunk. It is now known as the Sadakut Shipwreck and is a very popular spot for many dive schools on the island. When you explore it, you can start at the bow of the ship underneath the gun platform. These entry points will take you down a set of stairs and into the front cabin. You can continue forward until you reach the middle of the ship, which is directly under the bridge. At this point, there is a corridor that leads directly to the stern of the ship. There are smaller, deeper rooms, however, these are not for amateur divers. Underwater Museum the Cancun Museum of Underwater Art is one of the most successful conservation projects in the world, and it has quickly become one of Cancun's top attractions. The project was launched in 2009 to create an artificial reef and help restore marine life, and it has to be one of the most surreal and stimulating dive sites ever. Located under the waters of the Mexican Caribbean Sea, the underwater sculptures are located 30 feet deep, which makes them perfect for recreational diving activities. Whether you're a beginner or an advanced diver, it's yours to enjoy with 500 sculptures located at the bottom of the sea. These works of art stimulate the growth of coral reefs and different species of marine life for tourists to enjoy while diving. 
A glass bottom boat is a great way to get a view of the underwater museum of art without getting wet and is great for people of all ages. Admire the schools of tropical fish and other marine life that swim beneath you from your comfortable seat in a glass bottom boat. The bewitching underwater museum is more than an art museum, it's an act of conservation. The sculptures are composed of materials that encourage coral reef formation, creating new places for sea life to flourish. Mary Celeste This Confederate Civil War era blockade runner called Mary Celeste sunk in 1864, carrying much needed supplies to the south. A long and very narrow ship, making her very fast. She was able to cruise at about 15 knots, which was considered an extremely high speed in the mid-19th century. While being piloted by a man who famously said, I know every rock here, as well as I know my own house. The ship struck the reef and sank within eight minutes near Bermuda. The Mary Celeste was discovered abandoned in 1872, and to this day experts are unsure about what happened to its crew. When the crew boarded the Mary Celeste, they found everything in perfect order. The crew's clothes were even neatly packed away. Yet there was not a living soul to be found aboard the ship. Today, she sits at about 55 feet in a sand patch surrounded by reef. The Mary is the only paddle wreck that has one of its paddles still intact and is a highlight of the dive. The wreckage of the Mary Celeste is a popular dive site. In 2011, after a particularly strong storm had removed a large quantity of sand from the bow section of the wreck, a team of marine archaeologists uncovered several sealed bottles of wine and perfume. Sunken Submarine HMS Perseus was a British submarine built in 1929 and lost in 1941 during the Second World War. The first to be fitted with torpedoes, she apparently struck an Italian mine seven miles north of a Greek island in the Ionian Sea. The wreck at 171 feet below the surface was discovered and surveyed in 1997. Perseus lies on the seabed with a starboard list. On her port side, narrow to the bow, there is a crack caused by her collision with a mine. That is the only significant damage to the vessel. The rest of her hull is in good condition. Her gun, her steering wheel, and everything else is in place. Her compasses, which are still working, show her last course. The escape hatch of the stern compartment is open. Close to Perseus divers found the anchor of an Italian mine, a discovery that seems to confirm that an exploding mine was used for her sinking. A submarine from World War I was discovered, essentially intact recently. The sub, which was used by Germany during the war, was found off the coast of Belgium. The newly discovered UB-2 type dive boat was found about 80 to 100 feet below the surface. The sub may have struck a mine before going down. This find is the 11th wreck to be found in the region. And these sites are becoming popular dive sites. Number 3. Tank it's not just planes, trains, and boats that end up in the ocean now and then. Tanks do too. The world's first underwater military museum has been created just off the shores of Aqaba, Jordan. After 30 days of planning, a total of 19 pieces of hardware were sunk over a period of seven working days. The equipment was sunk in battle formation and includes tanks of different sizes, an ambulance, a military crane, a troop carrier, anti-aircraft guns, and a combat helicopter. The military museum is the first product of its kind in the region. It is important because the sport of diving in Aqaba is attracting many tourists from around the world. Great attention was given to the environmental effects of sinking the equipment. All hazardous materials were removed to comply with environmental best practices. The location of the museum was specifically chosen for its lack of coral and other marine life. It is hoped that not only will the new attraction bring more divers to Aqaba, but will also help to alleviate the burden of increased tourism on local coral reefs. This will reduce the pressure on the natural coral reefs by creating new artificial sites. Visitors will be able to enjoy the attraction by snorkeling and glass bottom boat tours, as well as scuba diving. Number two, black smoker. They're called the factories of the sea. In many areas of high volcanic activity, Water seeps into the subsurface where it is instantaneously heated, even underwater, and then finds its way to the surface again. At the bottom of the sea at a depth of several thousand feet, these deep sea hydrothermal vents bring up valuable raw materials from the inside of the earth. Their vents seem to give off black smoke like underwater industrial chimneys. That's why they're called black smokers. Within these regions, seawater seeps down deep into Earth's crust through cracks and fissures in the ocean floor. This water is then heated by magma below the surface. As the water is heated to a boil, it expands and rises back to the surface. 
When it reaches the ocean floor, the water is a dark chemical soup. Surrounding these chimneys was a unique type of ecosystem unlike any other. Until this day, science had always assumed that all life on Earth obtained its energy from the sun. Here was proof for the first time that life could be sustained by the Earth itself. That's big. Organisms found near black smokers are those such as a three-foot-long tube worm, shrimp, crab, and anemones. Human Teeth Fish Recently, an angler casting a line off Jeanette's Pier in North Carolina caught a hefty and toothy 9-pound sheephead fish. The fish, also known as convict fish for their black and gray horizontally striped body and ability to steal bait, have large, beady black eyes and an uncanny grin that resembles a human smile. The coastal critter was dubbed the sheep's head fish for the way its mouth resembles the muzzle of a sheep. Because the sheep's head diet consists of mollusks and crustaceans, their molars assist in crushing their prey's tough shells. Young sheep's head fish eat marine worms or any soft-bodied animal found within seagrasses until all their specialized teeth grow in. A full-grown sheep's head will grow up to three feet long. They'll eventually grow three rows of stubby, flat teeth in their upper jaw and two rows lining their lower jaw. The fish's front teeth are even coated with enamel, like the humans incisors they resemble. The Asian sheep's head is a species of wrasse, one of the largest native to the western Pacific Ocean, where it inhabits rocky reef areas. Imagine catching this fish on the end of your fishing line. It's one of those strange sea creatures that often gets referred to as beautiful ugly in the fishing world. Whether you love to explore what's below the waves or prefer to keep your feet on solid ground, you can't deny that some pretty terrifying things can be found underwater. So, like and subscribe since we haven't scared you away, there are more discoveries on the way.